You may have seen an ad at the start of this video, which signifies I'm finally monetized on YouTube. So it's been a goal of mine for a good couple of years. And in this video, I'm going to show you the process, the requirements to do so, and how I approached it. So what does being monetized on YouTube actually mean? So basically it just means that you can earn money from adding adverts onto your videos. So YouTube via Google AdSense can select adverts to show on your videos, either at the start or at the end. And if your video is longer than eight minutes, then you can have what they call mid-roll ads, so you'll have an advert partway through. But yeah, it just basically means that you can start earning money from uploading your content onto YouTube. So in terms of the actual requirements of getting monetized on YouTube, there's two key main metrics that they look for. So first of all, you need to have a thousand subscribers. And the second one is that you need to have 4,000 watch hours. Both of these are quite big, especially when you start. But I would say that it's quite a low barrier to entry in terms of starting YouTube. Like, this is the first video that I'm using a proper camera, but up until now, I've just always used my phone. I've also had a GoPro, which I've used for, you know, action stuff and underwater. But, you know, everyone's, you know, got a smartphone that they can record stuff on. And the quality doesn't need to be amazing when you first start. It's just a case of executing, basically, and, and uploading, you know, the content that you want, and, you know, you'll eventually get there. So I started, like, a couple of years ago, and in during lockdown, had a bit more time and didn't really think anything of it. So I just started filming a few, you know, exercise at home sort of videos, just thrown up onto YouTube, not really thinking too much of it. Did a few of these, experimented with a few different ideas. And I wasn't really thinking about monetization at the time. It was just one of those things that I was like, I was trying to grow my Instagram a little bit. I was working towards my personal training qualification. So it was just another, you know, social media platform that I wanted to, to grow and, and hopefully sort of help create, you know, f future prospects and, you know, future clients, that kind of thing. And then middle of last year, so around sort of June, July time, I took the decision to quit my job and I was going to go traveling, which was also then the perfect opportunity to create more content. So not only could I then do carry on with, you know, fitness content, and then had travel as well that I could add another aspect to. So I spent two months in Bali from July until September last year. And that allowed me to really like dedicate so much more time to creating content specifically for YouTube. And that's where I really got the like the, the buzz from it. So not only was I then on thinking of like, you know, I've quit my main job. I now need to think of, you know, future revenue streams and having ad revenue from YouTube is a fantastic revenue stream. So I was working towards that. But also as I was doing it, I was quite enjoying, you know, documenting my, my journey, my progress, you know, the travel, seeing new things. It was quite nice, you know, looking back and seeing what you've done. And it was quite hard to start with, especially, you know, talking to a camera. You've got no, you know, verbal nods coming back at you. It's a very awkward and odd process. And over time, you, I'm, you know, I'm still getting a little bit used to it now but it's become a lot more natural than it first was when I you know, started a couple of years ago. And the editing as well, that's still a learning process, you know, and that can take quite a while as well to learn. But it's quite interesting to, to learn that along the way. So yeah, so there's all these sort of things that come together. So this first screenshot here is, I think it was like the first week that I got to Bali and it then became quite real. I was like, right, yeah, you know, I've quit my job. I've moved to the other side of the world and I really need to make a go of this now. And I remember looking at both of these requirements and going, you know, I've, I've put quite a lot of time in, so far, and I'm still miles away. Not too bad on the subscribers, like I was fairly, fairly happy with that. But to get to 4,000 watch hours just seemed such a big task at the time. And to put that 4,000 hours into perspective, say you create a video that's 10 minutes long, and say, for argument's sake, that 1,000 people watched that video. And 1,000 is obviously is quite a lot, especially when you're first starting out. I remember the first few videos that I put out got like 10 views. But just to make this a little bit easier, um, so yeah, say you've got 1,000 views, and then you can look at watch time, right? So not everyone's going to watch the whole video. Some people might click away after 30 seconds. Some people may watch the whole thing. But say we're looking around 60% sort of watch time. So for a 10-minute video, you could say average six minutes. 1,000 people are watching that on average six minutes. So that's 6,000 minutes. So you divide that by 60 and you get 100 hours. Now to get that 4,000 hours, that means you've then got to put 40 videos out that get in that amount of watch time and that amount of views, which when you're first starting out is, is a huge task. And especially when you're editing your videos yourself, I found when I was away traveling, sort of max I could put out a week was probably two videos. By the time, you know, I filmed it, I you know, edited it and put out, then planned the next one. So if you're looking to do 40 videos as a minimum, that's 20 weeks right there. And that's right off the bat getting quite a lot of views. So you can see how big this task is. I was quite fortunate in a way that I was in Bali, right? So creating content was slightly easier than it would be, say, if I was at home. There's so much to, to talk about, there's so much to go and see. So yeah, I think I was probably in like 
the best situation in that sense, which is why once I got going, the watch hours didn't take didn't take too long. But I put that groundwork in before, so I'd already built up a little bit of a subscriber base and I had a you know a good idea of what I wanted to do. So as the weeks went on, I kept uploading and slowly and slowly, you know, I'd accrue more watch time over time. And the more videos you put out, effectively you've got more content that someone can find, right? So if like a new subscriber or a new person comes across your, your video, they then might, if they enjoy it, they may then start watching some of your other videos. So it does come down to a numbers game and a quantity game. So as you can see over time, I was slowly adding to my subscriber base and my watch hours. I think the watch hours is definitely the hardest part of this. I think if you were using other social media, so I was using uh, Instagram and TikTok, both basically to feed people to my YouTube channel. So I think that helps with the subscriber base and it does help with the watch hours, you know, a little bit, but you really got to have the volume of videos there in order to get that watch time. So this was at the beginning of December, I finally hit the subscriber count and now it was just the watch time that I was I was looking for. And you'll find with the watch time that it's it's almost exponential because as I said earlier, that the more videos you put out, the quicker you can get that watch time. So I remember the first when I was I was getting like 20 watch hours, say every week, it then got to a point where I was getting almost, you know, like 200 watch hours every week to 300, 400 hours a week, just because you've got more volume of, of videos for people to watch. So around mid-December, I eventually hit both of the requirements and I was able to apply for the YouTube Partner Programme which is essentially what allows you to add adverts to your video. So once you have the requirements, there's just a couple of things you have to agree to. So you have to sign the, the partner program terms. You don't have to sign up for Google AdSense if you haven't already got an account, and you just have to wait to get reviewed. This can take anywhere between a couple of days to a couple of weeks, it's, it's, it's quite vague. Mine was about three or four days, I think, so it wasn't, wasn't too bad. And then once you're approved, you get a notification saying that you're now approved for the partner program and you're then able to add adverts to your video. That was a nice little message to wake up to. And then it's totally up to you how you want to add adverts to your videos. So you can select all your videos and just say you want to you know, monetize all of them, which is what most people will do. And you have to make sure they're you know, eligible for monetization to make sure there's no you know, copyright content or you know, music in there. But for most of the time, you'll be able to monetize all of your videos and you can choose the type of adverts, the non-skippable ones, the skippable, just the, the overlay adverts. So you've got quite a lot of choice about uh, you know, what kind of adverts you can add. So there's also a couple of other little benefits when you join the YouTube Partner Program. So the first one is memberships. So um, you could offer something extra to your, your audience and you know, people can, can sign up and they can pay a monthly fee and they can maybe get um, you know, exclusive content, they may be able to get a certain amount of merch. There's all different kind of things that you could offer to your audience that they might be willing to, to pay a little bit more for. And then the other one is, say you went live, you could, people pay to have like a super chat. So if you're live and you've got a chat box going and there's loads of people asking you questions at once, it's quite hard to pick out individual questions. So people can pay to what they call a super chat which is where their message then stands out and the content creator can then more easily respond to that question. So what I think I'll do in a couple of months, I'll you know I'll see how much revenue I, I've earned and then I'll do a video showing how much I've earned and how long it took and the, you know, the process that's involved with it. But it's not gonna be a lot in the short term. And I think most YouTubers will say that when they look at their revenue streams, they're, even though know, they're a full-time YouTuber, the ad revenue won't be their biggest revenue stream. It's a nice one to have and it was also semi-passive as well, right? So once those videos are out, they can be earning ad revenue for life effectively. And you're obviously gonna get spikes in your views when you first put them out, and different videos are gonna have different shelf, shelf lives. But if you can keep creating a bigger and bigger catalog of, of you know, content for people to watch, then you can increase your ability to earn ad revenue over time. So other than ad revenue, the, probably the two biggest things that YouTubers earn money from is the first is gonna be your affiliate links or you know, brand deals and sponsorships. So this is companies either paying you a salary or they're gonna give you a discount link where you can put you know, affiliate links into your descriptions, into your bios. And if your audience clicks on these links, they might get a discount themselves, but then you as a content creator, you're also gonna get a little kickback from that company. So you can earn quite a lot of money from, from these links, especially as your audience grows. And then the second one is the same with all social media is where if you can use your audience to funnel that to another revenue stream. If you've got a product that you sell, if you've got a course, that kind of thing, you've got an audience that you can then direct to that product. So yeah, really happy to be finally monetized on YouTube. I'm not gonna get carried away because I know it's not gonna be you know, a bigger earn in the short term. I'm just gonna carry on enjoying making videos, trying to see what I like, see, you know, try a few different things out, carry on the journey, carry on learning, you know, 
I'm always going to be improving, hopefully. And yeah, just see where it takes me. Especially now that I'm, you know, I'm self-employed effectively. So I've got to be thinking about multiple revenue streams. And this is just another string to the bow. So hopefully you can keep adding these revenue streams over time. And yeah, hopefully it will come together quite nicely. So yeah, thank you for watching, guys. I hope you found that useful. If there's anything you want to know, let me know in the comments. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll catch you in the next one.